weakness so that you then um, are moving to his, uh, I don't know, like to Medved or to his help, but you leave your own way. If you don't practice with little things, then it's very difficult to practice with the big things. You cannot. Look at the things that you are holding on tightly to, to say, this is my life, this is not tariqat, or this is my people, this is not ikhwans, this is my strength, there's nothing to do with Islam, or tasawuf, or the way of the dergah. Look at those things that you hold on tightly to. When you start letting go on those things and start consulting, then things will become better. Because it's not looking at your weakness, it's looking at your strength. You're strongly holding off, strongly fighting against that. Which ones are those ones? Some people, they say, oh, I love my share, I love so I love zikir, but my family matters. No. It's to do with me. How many of us, we went through that, no? What has this got to do with Hoja? It's between us. What has this got to do with Lokman Afendi? This is family matter. What has this got to do with this? This is work. What has this got to do with that? then that time you will be weak. And that weakness is according to your stubbornness. It's not your weakness because you realize you're weak. Because if you realize you're weak, you're always going to ask for help, no? Are you, do you need help or you think you are right? When you think you are right and you're not really getting much help on that situation, then that's when you're going to make the repeated mistakes, same mistake, over and over again. And that's the time when you are not going to be able to take control of the situation, to say, wait, this is my ego, this is not, this is someone else's ego, this is shaitan. This. You cannot see, you're just caught up again. Caught up in that whole uh, thing that you've been doing cycle, over and over and over and over and over and over again. And then it doesn't matter whether you're sitting in front of a prophet or not. Because you're not including the Prophet ﷺ in your own daily life. This is not, you're not including. This is what tariqat is. There's shariat, yes, you do's and don'ts, but tariqat is the lifestyle. You have to take that lifestyle and you have to put it in your lifestyle. Lifestyle means life. It means life. It means what you do to each other as a family, as a community, your work, your thinking, your ideas, everything. These days people are making friends with people who cannot help them. I feel comfortable. Right? If that is the most important thing, then why you go to the doctor? Most people think doctors are very un they're uncomfortable with doctors, yet they go there. Why are you going to trust? Now, being in Tariqah for some time, you need to trust. <coughs> we were just speaking. No? You see, now certain things have to shift, certain things have to change, especially after a while, say, this is not working. If it's working, we're not going to touch it. Maybe it's good, maybe, because even things that you're working and it's not mixing in, connecting with tariqat, it only works up to a certain point. After that, it doesn't work anymore. So now your lifestyle, you got to look at the lifestyle. How does a sheikh deal in this kind of situation? How does he deal with children? How does he deal with wives? How does he deal with this? How does he deal with that? You have to. If you don't, you keep on making the same mistakes. You take one step forward to two steps back, one step forward. Because everyone is caught up in their own cycle. Everyone's caught up in their own lives that they can't break out from it. It's a pattern that they have. Now, the shaykhs, they're just offering a different way of looking at it. The way, step by step, you're going to see, according to this eye, according to this eye, according to... Now you start seeing it, even according to your own eyes. You understand? Most people, they don't see it, that's why they're just caught up in that cycle. But once you break out and you start looking at it, then you start looking with your own eyes. Then that child say, okay, now you're looking, now you're understanding, good. Now look at it through my eyes. Now look at it through this other person's eye why this is happening. Now you look at it through this other person's eyes. Because it's not just, you cannot just be drunk. When you're caught up in that cycle, not understanding, not knowing, not taking yourself, you're drunk. Once you start looking with the eyes of the shaykh, the shaykh is just saying, now look at it through different angles, look at it through a hundred different eyes. You get a hundred different ways of understanding. 
But you're so caught up in your own way of doing it, but it doesn't work. Every time, we are not ones who are going to listen to anyone except for our Lord and our Prophet and our Shaykh. That's it. You understand? Who else is going to put pressure on us or this or that? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. If, if anything, we just we have to take a step back. We have to be very strong to say, Inshallah, we'll see. Yeah. Not to get caught up. Otherwise, it doesn't really make much of a difference. Because to this person, maybe the way that you're behaving, you're stuck 30 years ago. Maybe you're 40 years old, but you're still behaving as if you're 10 years old. You're still repeating that thing. This other person 20 years ago, this other person 10 years ago. They're still stuck, don't you know? But then you have to grow. Huh? How is it? You haven't seen a family for so long, maybe for some people. But you got to grow. You cannot be stuck where it was 20 years ago. The way of thinking, the way of understanding, the way of approaching things, it has to, you have to bring everything in. You cannot just, oh, this person is like this, they always make me. That means that they already rewire you, they get you under their skin. And then any time they can control you like that. It cannot be. You must be controlled by Allah. You must be controlled by the Prophet. You must be controlled by the awliya Allah. This is why you've been training. You, you haven't been under training with them. But with your shaykh, you have. Now, what are the things that you must shake off? What are the things that you must take on? You must know this. This is to become self-aware. To become aware. If you're not aware of yourself, why are we in tariqat? If you're not aware of yourself. The whole point of us here is to study ourselves. Correct? Is to know ourselves. We're studying ourselves. If you're not aware, then why are you here? Why are you wasting your time? All your zikr, all your sohbats, everything is to make you to become more aware. Why am I doing this? What is the reason? Why am I doing this? You give one answer. That's not good enough. That's the answer I always give to a hundred different people when they ask. You have to ask a different why, really, why? You mean you get deeper and deeper like this. Then you start looking at yourself properly. You're not going to be Satisfied with simple answers that you give. Huh? Inshallah. We gotta break out from that. In every one of us. Allah make it easy, inshallah. Wa bin Allahu Tafiq al Fatiha. Amen.